So uh, we're going to assume that this animal here is, uh, is less than 30 months of age. Uh, we want to look at some things uh, first with him and, and, and decide, well, how much fat does he have? Now we know that cattle will fatten and put on external fat from the front back and from the top down. And so this particular steer, uh, if we evaluate him, we can see that uh, he's put on some fat and condition in his brisket. He's put on some fat right in front of his shoulders. Uh, he's got some fat that is covering his ribs down his top line. You can see he's got a little bit of uh, fat over his pin bones there, and we call those his pones. Uh, and he will begin to fatten too in his underline, in its flank, in its cod where, where the testicles were, uh, and then all the way into the underline as well. And what you'll notice is cattle fatten, they're going to uh, become more square or rectangular in their appearance. They're going to lose that shape and dimension of their muscle there. Uh, and so as we study this steer, and we could see one of the, the key areas we try to look at is if those ribs are covered with fat. Uh, if they're covered with fat, that animal's probably somewhere around four-tenths of an inch of fat. Uh, then if we see the covering, but we begin to see some excess fat in the brisket, maybe right behind the shoulders or around their tail head, and excess in their flank, then we can start adding something to it. And so those cattle may have a half an inch to six-tenths of an inch of fat. So this steer, you really can't see his ribs, and he doesn't have a lot of fat covering around his, his tail head, not too much in his brisket, uh, but he's probably somewhere around four-tenths of an inch of fat. The next thing that we look at is, well, what is, what's his breeding here? Uh, as we study this calf, he's black-hided, uh, but some other things that we have to look at, too, is look at his head and, and ear and shape and eye design. Uh, to me, if we look at that, uh, he probably has a little bit of uh, ball syndicus influence in him. Uh, not a lot, but a little bit. If we study uh, him as black hide, we would maybe assume he's got some Angus influence genetics in him. He's probably not a uh, Brangus type because if we look at his bone and uh, foot structure, he's a little more rugged in his bone type, plus he's got some white uh, on his sheath as well as on his foot too. And so just looking at that and studying that, we probably would say he's pretty high uh, English influence or Angus influence. And with that, with being having around four-tenths of an inch of fat, you know, I would say and I would call this calf as probably be a low choice. And so that's the way that you kind of work through that process. This next deer, as you look at him, and, and we're looking at a front view, but he's certainly going to be uh, have more condition than the previous deer. We could see it in his brisket. We could see right behind his shoulders how fat he is there. He's really smooth in his appearance. He's got a lot of fat around his tail head as well. So this particular steer is probably somewhere in that half inch to six tenths of an inch of fat. Looking at his head uh, and just body type, he's probably a high percentage Angus. And so with that, we would probably call him at least a low choice is way that that particular steer would grade. Now, so that's kind of working through the exercise on the cattle. Now, as we look at yield grades, we know that as animals go from a yield grade 1 to a yield grade 5, uh, there's less in their cutability. So we go for an example of 53% boneless, closely trimmed retail cuts all the way down to a 44%. And so there is about a 10% difference uh, between those two. Uh, and so when we ask, well, is a, a yield grade four or five is a, a 10 to $20 discount justifiable because of that? And the answer is most likely yes, because of the difference in value of red meat versus fat or the white uh, meat that these cattle have. Again, we've already discussed the factors that affect yield grade, and we know that external fat thickness uh, is one of the factors. Ribeye area will influence it as well as carcass weight, and then kidney pelvic heart fat is the, the last factor there. Uh, you've gone through kind of the calculations on that, and we're not going to go through that because we're mainly just going to be looking at visual estimating of what a yield grade 1, 2, or 3, or 4 looks like. Uh, you could go through these cattle, and you're going to have some scenarios on video at the end of lecture where we'll go through and we'll, we'll estimate what their carcass weight is and what the rib area is, and we'll calculate some yield grades there. So this is just an example we'll go through looking at, we're going to estimate what those animals' carcass weight is to try to estimate what their quality grade is, or their, what their yield grade is. 
Uh, we know that the national average is around 63 and a half percent. Uh, and so if we had a thousand pound carcass, that animal would be, have a carcass weight of around 635 pounds. So we use that 63 and a half percent figure as we begin to calculate our yield grade later on in the lecture when we look at some videos of some steers and figure out what their carcass results are. The next area we'll look at is fat thickness. Uh, we've already learned how to evaluate fat thickness. It's no different from when we're evaluating fat for quality grade and evaluating fat for yield grade. 